because it's raining today. Um, I can't actually work on the trailer, but I can't work on a supporting item of the trailer, which is a trailer brake controller. And I'm installing it on a GMT 400. My Yukon, which is a GMT 400, is 88 to 98 GM trucks and SUVs, uh, the CK series trucks and SUVs. And uh, it goes to 2,000 in SUVs um, and up to, I think, 01 in heavy duty trucks. But uh, yeah, if it looks like this, this should apply to you. Um, different year models, you know, like 94 and, and down are going to have a different interior than the 95 and up. So your wires are probably going to be in different locations. But I think, but it should be roughly the same. So, but yeah, and what I'm installing is a Tekanch P3 9195. I got this because I've been eyeing it for a while. Even before I got the Yukon, I was eyeing it when I just had my Jeep. Uh, but I obviously never got trailer brakes, so I never bought a controller, so, yeah. But, uh, I got it mainly because it's basically the best of the best in its price range, roughly. Um, there, you know, people go on, uh, brand favorites and stuff, but, uh, Tekanch is, you know, up there is one of the good name brands. And, um... It suits my application, and it has a bunch of different features that I may or may not use, but it's got trailer presets, you can, um, and different color screens, and just a bunch of different settings that come in, come in use, useful. But uh, this is a proportional brake controller. There is time delay and proportional brake controllers. And then there's the OEM, which are integrated into the computers and whatnot. But, um... The time delays, which is not this, the time delays are usually the cheaper controllers, and the way they work is once you press the brake, it sends a signal to the controller, and then on a time delay, it slowly ramps up the braking power till you get to max gain that you have it set at. That's the way it always works. The proportional brake controllers like this one, uh, you know, basically have an, an inertia sensor in it, and if you get on the brake slow, it will slowly apply, apply brakes and might not even get to your full gain setting that you have it set at. It'll go up as much as it thinks it needs uh, based on your deceleration. Now if you get on the brakes hard, it'll shoot up to almost max gain, if not max gain, depending on how fast you're stopping, and then ramp down. This controller also has a boost setting which will boost the brakes initially and then drop back down to an acceptable level for based on deceleration for really heavy loads. Um, and that's all in the instructions and whatnot. It's got a bunch of different settings. But uh, as far as Takancha, it basically is the top of the line unless you get to the Prodigy RF, which is honestly basically a commercial only application. Or someone who has multiple vehicles with one, one trailer. Um, it's a complete, complete, completely different ball game. You mount, actually mount the controller to the trailer, and then there's a little controller you mount in the truck. But anyway, I also got some nuts to go on the uh, terminals, auxiliary terminals on the fuse box. I got this, but I don't think I'll need it. It's just some uh, uh, cable for, uh, the, you know, got it from Eve Trailer, but I don't think I'll need it. Um, I might use some of it because it is heavy duty. Uh, wire and I do need some heavy-duty wire to extend that some wires. I think this is everything that comes in the box you got your pigtail you Got a couple different brackets you Got bolts and screws Here's the other screws uh, Self tappers to mount it screws for the wiring some butt connectors a bag which is nice And in the bag is the controller And instructions and here's the controller so, so now I'm going to show you where I am going to mount it. Now, where I decided to mount it, I really don't want it way down here. Um, and I sit, I don't really sit close, but I sit high. Um, uh, a little short on the short side. And um, so I like to sit high to where I'm, you know, can see over the hood and whatnot. Uh, it's safer than sitting way down low. Um, and in doing that, my knees are it's kind of close to the dash so I don't like anything being really close right here 
So actually what I'm going to do, I got this old base knob that's not connected to anything anymore because I took it out. It didn't really, it was more of a crossover than a, a base knob and it didn't really work right. So I took it out, but I left this up because I had all the wire in. So I'm just going to take this off and I'm actually going to mount the controller roughly in this same location. So, um, uh, just so it's easy access, I have, you know, I can still get to my, um, outlets down there and my stuff like that. And it's easy for me to reach. I don't want to have to reach way down in the, in the, in, under the dash in order to, to manually do the adjustments. Um, so yeah. <clears throat> And the brake wire, at least for like the 95-ish and up, right there, on the bottom, on the left side, there's a white wire, and above it is a pink wire. That white wire is your brake uh, uh, feed. And on the back side, there it is again, there's the brake feed. Um, and then I have my alarm wiring and everything else. Um... When I did my alarm, I actually went way up to the top and connected to the controller itself. That's a pain in the butt, and I would have to take the alarm off, dangle the alarm down to get up there. I'd rather not do that. Plus, I didn't like the way I connected it. So I'm just going to tap off of this wire right here and use that for the brake controller. Now, as far as the brake wires... Oh, right now, this is where it might deviate. If your truck came factory with a tow package, um, it's already going to have all the wiring you need. Now, you're going to have to do some digging and make sure it's got it. Go under the hood, follow the frame rail, and see if you see just kind of something by itself with two wires that are folded over. I don't remember if they're already open. They might not be, um, but... There should be a wiring harness if you do that has some wires turned over on themselves. It should be a blue wire and a red orange wire. Those are the red orange is constant power to power accessories on the trailer. The blue is trailer brakes. Now, uh, at the rear of the vehicle, if nobody's messed with it, it's going to be wrapped up on top of your spare tire usually. Um, so dig around and see if you can find that. Again, that's all the wires you need to hook up a, a seven pin connector. Now that blue wire is going to the trailer brake controller for the trailer uh, brake feed. And again, the orange wire is gonna go up to here, the fuse box, and it's gonna go on one of the, those accessory lugs. It's gonna go on those accessory lugs because those are constant power. Um, that's the way it's designed. It, it it's should, sometimes anyway, have a square lug already on it. That square lug is going to go on one of those terminals and tighten down. Um, I'm actually going to get my power from for, for the trailer brake controller also from that post. So uh, I'll have everything under here under the hood and uh, then I'll just connect my trailer brake to that wire. So yeah, let's get started. I think I'm going to use this mount. Now uh, a quick tip this plastic bracket right here these holes are not threaded it's plastic you take the fine thread ones and before you even put this bracket on there run these screws in and cut the threads because there is no threads in there it should be fairly easy just be careful because these are thin plastic tabs you don't want to be pushing and torquing on them and break them um, but yeah, before you put this bracket on, run the screws in, run them back and forth, and make, make sure the threads are good before you put this on. Um, I was wondering why it wasn't come in and dropped and almost lost a screw, and then I realized there's no threads. So yeah, tap these threads first. Now, another thing with this brake controller, well, another reason I got it is some brake controllers you have to mount almost, you know, fully on. You know, and you can tilt it very, you know, a few degrees. This one, you have to mount it going directly forward, you know, not to the side. But it can go 360 degrees around. Uh, so you can have this straight up and down if you want to. Or even upside down and hang it from the ceiling if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, that, that's another reason I got it. Because I didn't know how extreme of an angle I was going to put it on. That's actually, you know, a decent spot. But, um... Like I said, I'm going to take this out 
and I'm going to put it right here. <clears throat> now again, you can mount it traditionally, which is under here, way down here at the bottom, which people usually do it, but that's really honestly right in the way of the brake pedal. And way over here isn't useful. Some people mount them right here. Like, that's right where my knee is. Like My knee sits right there and even touches this, my CB mic. So right there wouldn't, won't even work remotely. So, um, yeah, you can mount it getting kind of sideways off kilter, which you can't really do unless you have a timed controller. A timed controller you can mount almost anywhere. Um, and honestly, way down here isn't that bad of a deal, but then you block your uh, cigarette lighter ports. So, that's roughly about where it's going to sit. So, just take out a marker, mark that other grill, uh, where I need to mark that other hole, and then, uh, uh, I don't remember if I piloted these holes or not. I actually don't think I did. I just took a drill and ran them in. So, uh, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and uh, get that other hole done, mount it, and then we'll move on to the wiring. That's where I decided to mount it. I didn't mount it way up here where my uh, base knob was. I ended up moving it down to here because uh, it was sticking out way out here and I didn't like how far it was sticking out but that this one um, it's fairly straight you want it as straight in line with the vehicle as possible um, I have it cockeyed a little bit uh, it should work fine it's almost dead straight it's just a little bit cocked to the side um, but uh, yeah I got that mounted there, and um, <clears throat> it's uh, ready for the wiring now. Um, it's in a fairly comfortable position. I saw somebody modify this and mount it in here. That would be sweet, but I kind of, I kind of actually use that cubby. So, um, but yeah. Now, time to get on to the wiring. And the wiring is fairly straightforward. The black wire goes to your battery positive. I'm not going all the way to the battery. I'm going to that uh, lug on the fuse box accessory plug. The red goes to the white wire for the uh, switch. The white is ground and the blue obviously goes to the blue wire for the trailer brakes. So um, I'm going to go ahead and pull that wire out by the frame rail and show you what it looks like. Alright, I took the wire out of the wiring loom there's actually your lighting circuit right there that goes down into that loom and goes down. There's the wires. There's the blue and the orange wire. Um, I had to put a, another piece of uh, loom over that because I got a little zealous when I was trying to pull the tape apart. And uh, <clears throat> 20 plus year old uh, loom, as you probably know, especially right by the exhaust, is heat baked and it just shattered. So I put a piece of loom that I had over the bare wire and then put um, uh, put the clip back on it which is clipped on right there um, actually the wiring was actually the part that I showed you was coming out of the loom it actually went all the way up behind the, the brake booster and uh, and twisted back down onto itself up by the brake booster there was actually a stud and there was a clip that was holding it behind there. So you have to pull and either pull off or break the clip that's behind the behind and under the master cylinder slash uh, booster. Once you do that, then you gotta you gotta pull all the tape off. If you're careful, you won't rip your uh, uh, wiring loom. But I luckily had some wiring loom back around and wrapped it back over the wire and then put the clip back on it. But now that we're back up here, here that we're left with. I routed it up between the booster brake lines and stuff. Here's the square lug that's going to mount onto this. I'm going to take this nut off and put the nut that I bought on it uh, that doesn't have the washer so it goes all the way down. I actually have this ring terminal, a, a big nut, and then this nut. So uh, I'm going to take all that off and do it right. So that's going to be constant power for the 7 pin and for the 7 pin. And that's going to be for the brake controller. So this is going to go onto here. And I can go ahead and attach that because this is all already done. Then my blue wire, I'm going to have to extend. So I am going to use some of that. Um, I'm going to use some of that uh, 
wire that I got. This wire and the black is going to be the is what I'm going to use for the power. The white is what I'm going to I'm going to use for the brake controller. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, per the instructions, the black I'm going to stay black with black for the power, and then white's going to be for the brake controller. So uh, I'm going to get all this stuff routed and where it needs to be, and I'm going to go through a hole that I already have drilled that I have some stuff already going through, which is that right there. I still have room left. <clears throat> So, I'll do that in the Vubic. Alright, I have the brake controller on the label A, which is the one closest to you. And then I got the power for the trailer, constant power for the trailer, plus uh, lights for, yep, yeah, something else. Um, <clears throat> on this one. And got them tightened down with an 8mm by something nut that I'll let you know about. But, uh, yeah, it's ready to go. Got the uh, trailer brake wire connected to the white wire. So, uh, I can, I've got the fuses out because I need to uh, still hook up wires on the inside. Don't want to blow anything. So, uh, yeah, go to the inside and start routing wires. All right. Now, I don't have everything zip tied out of the way, but this is basically what it's looking like. There's that. Got the wire coming down here. Got it all taped up. I got it grounded right there. And then I got the wire coming in right here and have it soldered in to that white wire. I got a big old zip tie on it because I can't find my small ones right now. But I just uh, uh, split the loom. Uh, I, didn't cut, I didn't cut the wire. I just uh, took my uh, wire strippers which scissor out I split the loom I stripped this I took my screwdriver uh, separated the wire poked you know poked through the uh, uh, the copper so I separated the copper from the top and the bottom took the red brake wire stuck it in there wrapped it around soldered it then put tape around it and then put a, a zip tie around it um, the this is the Cable come from the front. The white is the brake. Goes to the goes to the blue. The black goes to the black. That's the power. And again, the ground is right there. So I should be able to put the fuses back in. It's like, and we have life. trailer connected which is obvious uh, display whoops display brightness I usually like things high color obviously green light green just ooh I love that I always love I always love the magenta color when October comes around, that's what I usually turn my lights to is magenta. That's dull pink. So let's go back to green. I know. Brake type. Uh, you can do hydraulic with this. And I'm way off the screen. Hopefully that was in. But obviously we're doing electric. My application. Yep, no trailer. Um, help will actually... Language troubleshoot. There's a troubleshooter, which is cool. Tells you the voltage. Tells you stoplight. So press the brake. I got 12.2 volts coming through my stoplight switch, so that's working. Output voltage, 2.1 volts, because that's I think that's what the gain set to. Oh, gain set to 11. Um, it's just. Yeah, it's good. Just that's what it's going to output normally. Uh, with another connect, output current. It's going to be no amps because yeah, no amps because nothing, no amps because nothing's coming through the uh, brakes, so you're not going to get any reading. Man, I got to tighten that down. 
battery voltage again. So it's, it's, it's just an easy thing to do. And that is, well, there's more on display. Contrast. Oh, that's, that's cool. I'll leave that where it is. No trailer, yep. Brick type. That's pretty much it. Now it's not going to let you do any... Th oh. oh. Okay, so it will let you do the power settings. Maximum power, I guess, is 14 volts. No trailer connected, it's not going to tell you anything. That's... It should be gain, though. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. It's not going to let you do anything, cause, but, yeah. Um, and that should blank out. There should be a timer. And, uh, after the vehicle's uh, idled, it should turn itself off. Um, which is why you connect it directly to battery and directly to ground. Uh, I think there's like a vol low voltage, there's a low voltage sense. And there should be a, uh, a timeout function where... If, if it senses 12 volts for a while, I think it, it turns itself off. But, uh, yeah, there's where my trailer brake controller is. This is where I'm going to be sitting, so the steering wheel's not going to be that high. But that means all I have to, and I'm going to be sitting farther forward, my seat's all the way back. So it just has me reach down, and I can manually do it if I have to. So, and that's it. Um, the Contra P3 install. Um, yeah, I just got to tidy up the wires underneath, and that's it for now. Um, I'll, uh, again, like the trailer brakes, once I actually get a chance to get everything hooked up and wired up, I will, uh, I guess go through some sort of setup with the trailer brakes. Um, and, uh, then, um, I'll give a, you know, first impression or whatever and then a little bit of review after i use it for a couple times but i gotta get the jeep running first to actually put some weight on it so um yeah that's it i kind of all over the place um i hope it was helpful um yeah and i'll talk to y'all later Bye.